Awo Shalom Aras Tefari Ine Aras Yadinos Tefari Ine. Now I want to deal with this further issue concerning the controversy or a controversy which some would say that we started, but we didn't really start this controversy concerning Marcus Messiah Garvey. It's actually been there. It's like the so-called elephant that's in the room or the gorilla that's in the room or what's already present but nobody want to touch it. Nobody really want to deal with it. And when people do deal with this issue, I have addressed some of these contentious points, some of these um, controversial points. They've spoken about it in hush-hush tones. But there's a major issue to be addressed. So some are out there, some so-called Rastas. And we pointed this out before when we made the distinction between Rastafari and the true meaning of Rastafari and Rastas and Rastaisms and Schisms and bandwagon riders and so-called um, wolves in sheep clothing. Now, the sheep clothing, the true sheep clothing of the real sheep, the sheep nature, means that we are humbly followers of His Majesty's Christ. But first we have to learn His Majesty's Christ. And we have to recognize the Mets of Caduce. We've got to recognize the Bible and the teachings, most of all, of His Majesty. That means that His Majesty is God and King of Kings. His Majesty is Christ and His kingly character for I and I and I. That means that there is no other in the Trinity of His Majesty besides the Father, He is, the Son, He is, and the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit of Rastafari. And in this revelation time, that spirit is Ethiopianism. It's truly revealed in the spirit of Ethiopianism. But Ethiopianism is an issue that many might have heard of it, and some might not have heard of it. And once again, this leads us to the controversy concerning Marcus Messiah Garvey. Now, some feel that we were unduly harsh and some even claim that I and I is a false teacher or is a so-called African-American Rasta. You see, these, these, these confusions, you know, these are the poisons that already lurk in the mud and they got to hatch out. But let's first of all just clarify this issue if it wasn't already clear. We know the issue is clear to some but it might not be clear to some others. So if you are watching this, or if you choose to view this and to watch this, we will recommend it to you, not just those who are positively and receptive to the good news that we have proclaimed through this YouTube channel and through the Line of Judah Networks and the Society and so forth, and so on. But even those of you who don't like I and I, but one thing we want once and once, and it's what the scriptures actually says, and we want to begin this off with a scriptural reference. We didn't script this out because we don't have to script this out, seeing that we have the scriptures, you understand, and seeing that we're guided by the spirit of the King of Kings and his Christ. But take some notes. First of all, ones have sought to make I and I an offender because of the word. Some even, you know, wish I and I harm. Some want to crucify I and I. Some even want to kill I and I because we pointed out the truth concerning Marcus Messiah Garvey vis-a-vis -vis his imperial majesty. So the question we ask you is this. If you are so-called Rasta and you're offended because we point out the truth concerning Marcus Garvey, then why do you call yourself a Rasta? Rastafari, even. You should be a Garveyite. You, always, you cannot get offended at I and I before you first of all get offended at our brother, Marcus Messiah Garvey, for his offense 
in the King of Kings and for the lies and the slander that that he uttered against the King of Kings. Now, we know His Majesty went to Jamaica. He laid a wreath at Marcus Garvey's at Marcus Garvey's grave site because His Imperial Majesty is walking in the way of Christ and He's gracious. Matthew chapter 11. Take that as first of all a note because what we want to discuss in this particular in this particular um, follow up. We we call this a follow up. Is Marcus? Let's write this right here. Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey. John the Baptist. Right. Marcus Garvey. Is Marcus Garvey the John the Baptist? Is Marcus Garvey the John the Baptist? Not just of Rastafari movement, but for we the black peoples of the world. Marcus Garvey has played a very significant role. And this is the positive aspect of the role that Marcus Garvey played. Just like John the Baptist also played a very significant role. And there was a positive aspect to the role that John the Baptist played. But when one-to-one -one say, especially many Rastas and, and those in Rastafari, that Marcus Messiah Garvey is our John the Baptist and, and that he is the prophet, one needs to understand who John the Baptist, who was John the Baptist, who was John the Baptist vis-a-vis -vis the Christ, and who was Marcus Garvey, vis-a-vis -vis Christ in his kingly character. This is what is significant for us to understand. And the only way for us to understand it in order to get a good standing and be in good standing before we can even overstand is to go to the glory of His Imperial Majesty. And that's the B-I-B-L-E. That's the Met of Caduce. That is the Bible. So, I recommend to you Matthew, Matthew 11, Matthew chapter 11. It's a very significant reading. It's a very significant study as well as a very significant meditation because if you do not over, if you do not understand it, first of all, and gain a good standing concerning what the Christ, Gitachinam and Hanatachin Yesus Christus, Jehoshua HaMoshiach, said concerning Johannes Matemko in Matthew chapter 11. And you cannot rightfully say that Marcus Garvey is or is not the, quote, John the Baptist. Not just of the, not just of the Rastafari movement, but for we, the black peoples of the world. Now, why, why do we say this? Now, we know that many have taken offense, as we've already mentioned. They've taken offense to the fact that we have pointed out and reminded ones of the fact that Marcus Messiah Garvey, like John the Baptist, was offended in Jesus Christos, was offended in our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ in the same way that Marcus Garvey was offended in his imperial majesty. Now this is this is what's very very extremely interesting. If we were to present this in a chart, on one side we put Jesus Christ, John the Baptist, and on the other side we put Rastafari, his imperial majesty, Haile Selassie, and Marcus Garvey. And we go through from the Bible as a template some of the main key and significant points, both in the positive as well as in the negative. You see, someone to romanticize Marcus Garvey and nostalgicize Marcus Garvey and um, suppress the truth of the offense 
that Marcus Garvey took in his imperial majesty, and moreover, the generational ramifications that that has caused to both the Ethiopianist movement of we the black peoples of the world as well as the Rastafari movement. And it's only until we address this issue and we confront this issue honestly with faith courage and a just cause that we can really receive this new day, this new millennium, this new time, this newness. If you can't recognize all the signs of the time, then pray that your eyes and your ears be open so that you can recognize what time we're really in right now. That's why this message is so important. And that's why this reasoning and discussion that hopefully our videos and our reasoning has created will help to further bring us into this new day and get past that stumbling, that stumbling block. And the stumbling block is many know the truth of what we say concerning Marcus Garvey and the the negative insults, accusations, slander that Marcus Garvey offendedly and offensively said against his imperial majesty. But what most don't recognize is the lasting ramifications that that caused to both the movement and the forward progress of black people, as well as us, I and I, as the Rastafari. So let's get into this discussion right now. And to those who have taken offense in the word that we put forward, and some would take offense in the word that we are putting forward now, first of all, we'll say that ones don't have to watch, ones don't have to listen. One can turn a deaf ear. One can remain ignorant and ignore the truth. But time will tell. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 21 is very interesting. Let's touch on Isaiah chapter 29, verse 21. Isaiah 29 and 21, it says, that make a man an offender for a word, and lay a snare for him that reproveth in the gate, and turn aside the just for a thing of naught. Here in the scripture is speaking of how some make a man an offender for a word. In other words, those who speak the truth, it says the truth is a what? The truth is an offense, but the truth is not a sin. The truth might be an offense. And for us to point out how Marcus Garvey was offended in Kedamawi Haile Selassie back in the 1920s and 30s, and how, like John the Baptist, because of that offense, he lost his head. Marcus Garvey lost his head. And when you compare the great works and the great potential of this man, this man whom I and I love, and when we first became aware of what Marcus Garvey said concerning the King of Kings, and we double-checked and fact-checked and, and sought to verify it because it was like incredulous. We could not, as they say, quote, believe, or we could not accept that. How could the prophet, quote, end quote, of Rastafari say such things? How could the one who said, look to the east, for the coronation of where a black man will be coronated king, 
the day of redemption being near, the day of redemption being here, according to the Garvey, the Garvey version. We already know that he wasn't the first proclaim of it, but it was his proclamation because he was like that John the Baptist. So though other prophets had gone before him, he was the one appointed to be that voice crying in the wilderness, just like John the Baptist. So when we came across what he said in, 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 in his latter years, in his, in his decrease, what could we say? We were very offended. But a good thing we didn't go off of that offense. We meditated. We prayed on it. And it was through the study of the scripture, especially Matthew chapter 11, which we point out right here. It was through the study of Matthew chapter 11 that um, we saw how the Christ, how Jesus Christos, was magnanimous. How his imperial majesty, even in dealing with Marcus Garvey and even his legacy and even the visit to Jamaica and laying the reef and not going on about the offense that and things that Garvey had said, cowardly lying and slave driver and this and that and the next thing that he said, it taught us a lesson as well. It taught us that the wrath of man does not work the righteousness of Jah, Rastafari. So, this to my offended brothers and sisters and others out here. Let this be food for thought. But let us continue with Acts of the Apostles 25:11. That we, we're pointing out offender here, right? And we're going to come back to Isaiah because Isaiah chapter 29 is very important. But we want to. Um, share with you um, just a little message concerning offense and those who have been offended by the word of truth that we have said concerning Garvey because if it was not true, then they would bring forth the evidence. Bring forth your evidence. If what we're saying concerning what Garvey said maliciously and slanderously against his imperial majesty is not true, then bring forth your evidence and make your case. Otherwise, lie not against the truth. Acts of the Apostle 25.11, here was Paul's appeal, Hawaria Paulos. And we know how his imperial majesty spoke concerning Paul in his teachings. And these are the teachings for Rastafari, the teachings of his majesty. So therefore, here in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 25, beginning from verse 10, Paul's uh, appeal to uh, Caesar or Caesar, then said Paul, I stand at Caesar's judgment seat where I ought to be judged. To the Jews, and today it's like saying to my Rastafari brethren and my Ethiopian Hebrew brethren, have I done no wrong, as thou very well knowest. You know this to be the truth. For if I be, verse 11, for if I be an offender or have committed anything worthy of death, I refuse not to die. But if there be none of these things whereof these accuse me, no man may deliver me to them. And here Hawaria Paulo says, I appeal to Caesar or Caesar. Caesar was the Roman imperator. The Imperator, which we would say, Bamarinya Negusa Neges. He was the King of Kings in that dispensation. That's what Kaisar means. It means to be a Roman King of Kings. It's, it's the way they say um, 
king of kings. In fact, if you read any German um, Rastafari, um, among the Rastafari community in German, if you're able to understand some of the German, you'll see that when they say Haile Selassie and, and, and Emperor Haile Selassie, they call Haile Selassie Kaiser. They call him Kaiser, and Kaiser means Caesar, but that is because that's what they call King of Kings. You understand? Within their language. Just to kind of clarify that matter um, to those who might be ignorant concerning it. But what Huaria Paulos was saying right here is that he's saying that his own people had become so offended in him because he started to minister Jesus Christos, Jehoshua HaMoshiach. He was a Pharisee of the Pharisees, just like Ayaniah, Naya Bingi of the Bingi, uh, Bobo of the Bobo, a uh, twelve tribes of the t tribes men. But as soon as you now point out the truth that might differ with their mansion or denomination, so forth and so on, the ignorant are not able to receive it because they are ignorant, and that means they don't know it. They don't know it. His Majesty has a saying on that as well. His Imperial Majesty, Kelamawi Hala Salasi, our father, he says that um, the youth, they lack wisdom because they lack experience. You see? So there's a lot of ones who lack wisdom. They can't know it because they lack an experience or a familiarity with it. This is why we say that before ones go off half-cocked, go check out what we're saying. Go fact-check it. And if it be not true, then bring forth your evidence. Otherwise, you're not going to offend against I, but you're going to offend against I, Father, who you say is your Father. Therefore, don't seek to kill or harm a brother or a sister for the truth. Instead, bring the truth forward or acknowledge what the truth is and stay in the grace, the barakat of God. Stay in the barakat of Jarastafari. This is the word to the wise. And I say this in love, brothers and sisters. All right? Now, that being... That being so, let us now touch more on the Marcus Garvey and John the Baptist connection. Because a lot has been said that Marcus Garvey is a prophet. Some say Marcus Garvey is the prophet of the Rastafari movement. Some believe he was the first proclaimer of the look to the east. Actually, in its first proclamation, it was look to Africa, where a black man will be crowned king. In him, you will find the Redeemer. Marcus Garvey's version is a little bit different. More popular, more people got to know it, especially in Jamaica among the early Rastafarians in the Isle, the Caribbean Isle of Jamaica, they heard it as, look to the east. Where, where a black man will be crowned king, the day of redemption is near, and some versions say the day of redemption is here. And if you go through a lot of the data and the information, you will find this, this statement of look to the East in a couple of different versions. Have you ever asked yourself, well, which version was the original version? You see, we can go to the scriptures, you understand, to verify the gospel, to verify the prophets, to verify the words. This is King James. But if King James offend ye, we can go to the royal Amharic. We can go to the Metz of Nagusa Neges. 
We can go to the Mets of Gadu of His Imperial Majesty. And if that be an offense to any, well, we can't go to no, no higher. And if they don't want to go to the King of Kings, well, they are going to go to hell. You understand? So let that, let that be their judgment. But for I and I, let us understand something about this whole prophethood thing concerning Garvey. Do you recall John the Baptist? Since John the Baptist is the comparison that is often made concerning Marcus Garvey, and this is our brother, we actually sat down and watched this video, and our version of it is a double feature. There's also a uh, 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 extra besides the, the PBS portion, but it's, it's still very, very interesting. This particular um, documentary, um, Marcus Garvey, UNIA, The History and Toward Black Nationhood. And if you watch it carefully and you study it, what we're saying will become very clear and evident from, from this. But, um, that being the case, let's look at John. Let's look at John's gospel for a moment. Give us a moment right here. When we go to John's, John's gospel, when we go to John's gospel, let's put some of these books on the side over here. John's gospel, the gospel according to St. John, chapter, chapter 1, verse 15. What does it say? It says that John be a witness of him. John bore witness of him and cried, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received. And grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ, Jesus Christos. No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. And this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? So the Jews, to say the, the Jewish authorities, it's like when we go back to the 20s and the teens and the 20s and the 30s, the black people's authorities, the Negro authorities, namely the preachers, the pastors, the other leaders, so forth and so on. That's what it means when it says the Jews. It's not just speaking of the regular people, but of their religious and their political authorities. We can say in Garvey's time, the leading Negroes of the time. We can even say that today. But they ask, Who art thou to John the Baptist? And he confessed. John the Baptist confessed. And he denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. Confess, I'm not, I'm not the Moshiach. I am not the Christ. But there's more. And they ask him, verse 21 chapter 1, the gospel according to St. John, and they asked him, what then? What then? Art thou Elias? Art thou Eliao? Are you Elias? And he saith, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, no. So, <laughs> what meaneth I and I if we say that Marcus Messiah Garvey, right? If we say that Marcus Messiah Garvey was the John the Baptist, what do we mean? Now, some say he was John the Baptist and he was a prophet. 
Others say that he was Black Moses, which I find to be very interesting as well. And we don't doubt that he fulfilled a mosaic, a, a mosaic prefiguring or a mosaic manifestation in his time. But that will lead us into another teaching concerning Marcus Messiah Garvey, the Black Moses. In what way was he the Black Moses? But remember that even if we do acknowledge that Marcus Messiah Garvey was the Black Moses, let us understand something. That Moses did not lead the children of Israel into the Promised Land. He led them out of Egypt, crossed the Red Sea, through the wilderness for 40 years, but he did not lead the children of Israel, the Dekika Israel, the Bani Yisrael. He did not lead them into the promised land. Why? According to the Bible, the glory of his majesty, the glory of Hala Selassie, according to the teaching of his majesty, the Bible is his glory. For my part, I glory in the Bible. So according to the Bible, the reason why Moses did not go into the promised land and lead them into the promised land is because he had disobeyed Jah. He disobeyed Yah. He offended the Almighty. Hmm. So, is Marcus Messiah Garvey the Black Moses? Perhaps we don't make any doubt about the claims that he is a Black Moses or the Negro Moses, as they said at that time. They actually said the Negro Moses. Nowadays, we upgrade it and we say the Black Moses. Moses, because most don't call themselves Negroes. In that time, they were still calling themselves colored, but there were a few who had the spirit, this new spirit, and were calling themselves Ethiopian, even in such a time. Marcus Garvey, he chose to call himself and call ourselves Negro, and that was a step up from colored. See, th this is the positive aspect of the Marcus Garvey, um, the Marcus Garvey, we can say, ministry, the, the, the earlier aspect of it. You understand that we cannot deny, we cannot erase from history, and we would not even attempt to. We take great pride in these early works of Marcus Messiah Garvey, greatly in these early works, just like we take great offense in his latter slander and blasphemy against our godfather, against Adamawi Haile Selassie. Does this offend you? Does, does this truth offend you that we are looking at it the way Haile Selassie would want us to look at it? Honestly and straightforwardly, without any sort of fantasy or make-believe or romanticization or any of that. we got to be sober in this time, brothers and sisters. And many of you all have to upgrade your so-called, quote, belief system because we're about to go into a new age. We're going into a new time. A lot of the belief system, a lot of a lot of the so-called world and what people have come to think is reality is about to crash and is already crashing in a very, very dramatic way. So if you don't upgrade your reception to reality, to the full truth, to the half of the story that many don't want to tell you, many might not have the courage to come forward and say, and I love Marcus Garvey, but fire bun what he said about the King of Kings. He just like John the Baptist. I love that man, but he went astray. He lost his blood clot head. But still, we love that brother. But now it's about Haile Selassie. Now it is Jah time. So stay tuned. We're going to go a little bit more 
into um John chapter into John chapter uh chapter one. But as we just read it, you you heard it where they asked him, Are you Elias? Are you are you that prophet? And what did John the Baptist say? He said, No. He said, No. But stay tuned and let us learn a little bit more about Marcus Messiah Garvey, the John the Baptist of we, the black people of the world.